Hey guys, Charles Walker here. So in this video, what I want to talk about is tanks. One of my favorite overall just, I guess, classifications of character in video games, in RPGs, etc. And in particular, I like them in tabletop games because one of my first ever characters was a barbarian and I just like the reckless frontline fighter at times. They're fun to play. But I know a lot of people, when they see tanks, they don't really want to play the classic tank. They'd like some more options. And I get that because D&D, that's something I always recommend. Never dump con. Ever. Don't. Don't even think about it. I see you there. Now, in all seriousness, because in D&D &D you can take some insane damage at some level. So con is something I always recommend. At least have it a moderately good stat. And for that, not a lot of people want to play the classic uh, tank, so they may wonder, hey, what are some other options? So I want to talk about some of the other options you can have when it comes to leveling up your character and making them able to take hits better when you reach end game and you fight a lich that has 20 cast of fireball. It'll happen eventually. Anyways, so first, what I want to talk about is some of the customization options, then some actual more geared builds toward tankiness, so... Without further ado, let's get into it. And now, when I say tanks, I need to specify what I mean. To me, a good tank has AC and health. So, looking at the game, the most classic tanks are probably fighters, paladins, and barbarians. All great. All have really good AC potential and health potential. And that's what really makes them great. But, with the build diversity in D&D, you can build a lot of things to be a tank. If you build them right. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. And first, some of the customization options you may have. There are some different races you can do. Genasi be a good one since I get plus two to con. But the best one, I think, is actually dwarfs. And both of them for different reasons. Because hill dwarfs, uh, while they both get plus two to con, hill dwarfs, they get plus one every time you roll for health. So that's an extra 20 health at end game. And Mountain Dwarfs, they actually start proficiency in light armor and medium armor. So you could be an actual spellcaster with armor. So that's pretty great as it is. So that is something that would really help with some people suffering from AC is definitely picking a dwarf. And the other feature that I notice will be really good is the tough feat, which is a feat I recommend everyone get. It is so good. And essentially what it is, is you add plus two to your uh, con every time you roll for health. But first, when you take it, you actually take two times your level and add that health to you automatically. So in the end, it's geared to where you have an extra 40 health. So if you are a hill dwarf with tough, you automatically get 60 health as it is. So that's pretty good. That's going to help you a lot in any regard. So that's the first little bit. That should help you get a decent character with a decent amount of health. But as far as the tank builds, this is what I came up with after looking through some alternate builds. And like I said, for my classification, I was looking at classes that were a DA and below. So what I got here first is... Uh, the Draconic Origin Sorcerer, which I don't think is as great as the others, but has some really good abilities in the sense that starting at first level, you get Draconic Resilience, and that gives you two things. Your AC is a 13 plus your dex, so you have an unarmed AC, that's great, and that's a can potentially be a pretty good one, especially in comparison to some uh, squishy wizard's AC. Yeah. But also, they get another plus one to health on every level. So that's another good bonus there. If you did what I was talking about earlier, that's like plus 80 to health with everything else you stack on top of that. So that's great. And yeah, so potentially. Though they do lack in the fact that they have a D6 to, um, a D6 to health dies already and they don't have armor efficiency. So you want a tanky sorcerer draconics like your best option there. So I think that's a decent one, but an even better one, you're probably predicting this already, and that's Moon Druid. And if you never played a Moon Druid, they can be some of the most annoying to kill things in the game. And while I feel their DPS kind of suffers for it later levels, so if you only do the wild shapes, they're still pretty solid. So what it is, is normal Druids, they'll have two wild shapes, but Moon Druids, their cat for it's a lot higher. And also they can um, actually transform into elementals at a later level. 
So that's a good chunk of health already since you go earth elemental, you get like an extra 100 health uh, that basically stacks on top of your health. So that's pretty handy. And you don't even have to really cast your spells. You can actually expend a spell slot while you're in your wild shape to recover health. So that's something you can do, just in Demphodil, heal yourself and make yourself a tank like that. So Moondruid, pretty self-explanatory. And next one, this one has a lot of abilities. I think it's one of the best ones. The last, uh, best one is I'm saving for last, in my opinion. And it's honestly a toss-up between the two, but one of the best, in my opinion, is the Forged Domain Cleric. For a lot of reasons. And honestly, you're thinking this, I think this is the best, because... My gosh, Forge Domain is stacked with what it has, especially when it comes to tankiness. So, clerics, each domain has different abilities, and this one in particular gets proficiency in heavy armor, so you got that. And if you max out that heavy armor, oh my gosh. So first off, clerics have an amazing spell called Shield of Faith that them and Paladins have, where they get a plus two to their AC for a minute as long as they concentrate on it. So, this being a geared toward heavy armor class, next there is their first level ability where they can make a non-magical item and make it a plus one item for until their long rest. So you can have a plus one shield or a plus one plate, uh, plate armor. Then they have an ability level six, Soul to Forge, where you get plus one to uh, AC while you're wearing heavy armor and you're resistant to fire damage. If one thing out, uh, that was enough, hold up. Then there is Saint of Forge and Fire at 17th level, where you're immune to fire damage and you're resistant to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage while uh, wearing heavy armor. So if the dude's right, you're immune to fire, you're resistant to all them damage types, and if you have a Shield of Faith on, a shield, you uh, wearing heavy armor, and you made your armor a plus one, you have a 24 AC. Wow. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away by that myself, because, yeah. And if you get magical armor on top of that, or you get like a cloak of protection, or a ring of fate, no, ring of protection, which are other good tank options, because they just give you a static plus one to your AC and all saving throws. Yeah, that's a 26 AC possible. That's... Pretty wild. And honestly, a lot of their spells are geared toward combat, so you don't have to really make them a healing cleric. They can be whatever you want them to be. Just a really tanky full caster, honestly. So yeah, that's Forge Domain. And finally, the one I was originally thinking is the best one, and if you build them right, they can be. And that is the Abjuration Wizard. Reason behind this, you think wizard, you think a very frail old man. No, no, not Abjuration. So Abjuration, there is some pretty good already spells that uh, wizards and sorcerers have access to that would help if you're building a character like that. And there's two key spells if you want them to be more tanky, and that's Shield and Absorb Element. Shield increases your AC by 5 until the end of your, ne um, until the end of your next turn, and Absorb Element makes you resistant to one elemental type. So, yeah, those are pretty good as it is. But stacked Abjuration Wizard, that's where it gets really good. So, essentially, Abjuration Wizards, um, they have an ability at second level card, Arcane Ward. And basically, when you cast the Abjuration spell, you take twice your wizard level, plus your intelligence, and you gain um, a shield around you equal to that. So, if you cast that at first level, and you have max intelligence... That is a 50, uh, just a 15 points of basically temp HP surrounding you at all times. And if it's broken, you can actually reactivate it by casting another Abjuration spell, but instead it is twice the level plus your intelligence. So it's less, but still, if you're early level and you cast Shield, that um, that's already plus 5 to your AC, so you're already harder to hit, and that's another plus 7 onto your ward. And that doesn't stack, but still that's great. So yeah, you can constantly keep regaining health with very low level spells as well and stuff that's really making you stronger as you go up. And there's also spells like Mage Armor that you can cast at the beginning of the day and automatically activate your ward there. And Mage Armor, what it does is it makes your AC 13 plus your dex. Honestly, giving you the ability Draconic Sorcerers already have, but still, handy. So you do that, 
um, you have a decent dex, you could have like a 23 AC if you build it right. And if you add some magical augments onto it, which another good tanky item, there's an item called Bracers of Protection, where if you're unarmored, you get plus two to your uh, unarmed bonus. So build them right. They could have an absolutely insane e AC as a old man wizard only wearing robes. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And also at six level, their ward actually extends to 30 foot. So you can actually use your reaction to protect your allies with your ward, making your allies even tankier. And then at 14th level, you have advantage on all spell saves and resistance to damage from spells. So yeah, Abjuration's pretty wild, and I love them. They're great. My wizard's an Abjuration, and he is a good person. Yeah, that's canon, by the way. If all um, you see me dressed as wizard in any of my videos, it's Abjuration. Now, and that will be it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video, and if you have any ideas for any tank ideas you want to do, let me know. There's some I kind of want to go into, like Bloodhunters and another option, if you build them right, I guess, because they have a D10 of health, but... I wasn't sure. But anyway, so, uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for all the support I've been getting lately, guys. It's great. I will see you all in the next video.